So in an address to the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, Kirsten Cinema was asked about whether or not she'd support the PRO Act, which is the bill that would expand upon unionization in the United States, make it easier for workers to form unions. And her answer here, I mean, I'm honestly shocked that she had the audacity to admit this, but nonetheless, uh, she just told on herself. She said very clearly who she takes her marching orders from. And spoiler alert, it's not her constituents. There is some concern right now in the business community, as you've probably heard, uh, an issue that our friends at the Arizona chapter of the Associated General Contractors wanted me to bring up with you, that uh, there's a bill that passed the House, the PRO Act. Uh, give us a sense, as this bill makes its way to the Senate, where you uh, intend to be on this. We know it's an evolving issue. And if you'd be willing to have a a discussion with employers in Arizona about our concerns about this bill being a disruption to the workplace and to our business environment. Well, I would welcome such discussion. As folks who are listening today know, the way I make decisions on behalf of Arizona and for our constituents is by listening to the business leaders who will be impacted by these decisions. So I want to discuss this legislation and I want to know the impact it would have on Arizona jobs and the economy. Now, there hasn't been any movement on the PRO Act yet in the United States Senate, but I can tell you that many Arizona businesses have already reached out to my office and I know have discussed the concerns that they have with the PRO Act with some of the folks who are on our call today. Now, right now, this legislation is not scheduled to become to come before the full Senate, but we are watching carefully because some of the PRO Act provisions, especially in regards to the worker classification test for independent contractors, could become a part of other legislative ideas. So I would ask all the members who are joining us today to please stay involved with my office and help me by sharing information about how this would impact you and your company so that I can go back to Senate uh, leadership and folks on both sides of the aisle to discuss the concerns that Arizona businesses have. Wow. Not surprising, but she effectively just told you that she's corrupt. She doesn't listen to her constituents, the people that got her elected. She actually listens to the corporations that lord over her constituents. Unless my donors say this is a good idea, I won't support it. And that's effectively what she's saying here, right? I speak with business leaders, i.e. large corporations. And if they don't like something, I'm not going to do it. And I'm even watching to make sure that parts of the PRO Act don't get taken out and, you know, hidden in other pieces of legislation, such as clauses related to independent contractors and what have you. This is someone who is just straight up representing corporate America. And she might retort if this, you know, gets more viral by saying, you know, I'm addressing small businesses. That is code for I'm representing corporate America. Wow. I mean, I, I can't say that I'm surprised, honestly, but it, it's still a little bit jarring to see a politician just admit, no, I, I'm completely beholden to business leaders. And this isn't uh, necessarily surprising to folks who are astute and who's been following politics, because according to a 2014 Princeton University study that I cite all the time by Drs. Gillens and Page, they found that when it comes to policy outcomes, when you look at what citizens want, we have a statistically insignificant impact on policy outcomes, whereas economic elites, business interests, special interests, they actually do dictate what's, what gets passed into law. She's just demonstrating exactly how this process works, how a bill becomes a law. It's not what we were taught on Schoolhouse Rock, right? I wish it were that simple. It is whatever corporate America wants. So honestly, there's no use for Kirsten Cinema here. She should just resign, let Walmart take her position, let uh, Target take her position, Amazon take her position, because if corporations are people in this twisted late stage capitalist society, then we have no use for her. Just let Walmart take over for you. Let the CEO of some company fill in for you. You're, you're just a proxy for them. Like, what is the point? Why would you get involved in politics if you only want to represent business leaders? What's the point? When she ran, even though she ran as a moderate and, you know, she she essentially described herself as a mansion type Democrat, she still spoke the language that a lot of liberals use. Well, you know, I want to make sure that more people have a chance and I, I'm focused on equitability. But now she's just full mask off. No, 
I represent the uh, business leaders and I'm going to discuss what they want, not actually have a meeting with workers, not actually speak with my constituents. I want to see what business leaders want when it comes to constituents. Fuck off. I'll wear a ring telling you to fuck off. But when it comes to business leaders, I definitely want to hear what you have to say. And please be sure to contribute to my campaign. It's it's repulsive. It, it's sickening, but it is exactly what we've come to expect from a corrupt politician in America. Unfortunately, this is common. Like, I want to say that this is really something that's an anomaly, but it's not. What's rare is when they admit that they're corrupt. And that's what we got from Kirsten Cinema.